Okay, today's video lesson is on intermolecular forces. Um, intermolecular forces are essentially the forces that hold molecules together. I'm going to define that on the next slide. Uh, but for now, before we get to that, we need to talk a little bit about something called molecular polarity. Uh, at the beginning of this unit, we talked about bond polarity. We said that if we had a carbon atom bonded to a hydrogen atom, we said that the carbon atom had a higher electronegativity, so therefore it pulled electrons in this direction. So we had electrons moving towards our, chlor our carbons. Okay, we said that the bond was polar. What we're going to do now is we're going to start putting those atoms or those those bonds together into molecules. So we're going to have carbon with four hydrogens around it. And what we're going to do is we're now going to say, okay, what happens if I put all four of these bonds, which are polar, into the molecule? Will this molecule be considered polar or nonpolar? The entire molecular structure. All right, so to do that, we're going to look at two different types of, of structures. Uh, one is a diatomic, and these aren't just the seven special diatomics. There's other diatomic molecules out there, uh, hydrogen fluoride, carbon monoxide. Those are all examples of, of uh, structures that are two atoms in length. Okay, so that would be a diatomic molecule. Molecules that have a polar bond are polar. So if I have a two atoms, so essentially it's as simple as this. If I have two atoms like hydrogen and fluorine, they're going to have a difference in electronegativity. So therefore, boom, right? Two atoms is essentially what we were looking at earlier. So that would mean that the molecule, hydrogen fluoride, is a polar molecule. It's a partial negative and a partial positive charge. Okay, if I have a molecule that's two atoms in length and it's two hydrogen atoms, well, both of them pull with equal strength and this molecule of hydrogen has no polarity whatsoever. So we would say that this is a non-polar molecule. Okay, so two atom systems aren't so bad. When we get to polyatomic molecules, more than two atoms, well, just because their bonds are polar doesn't mean that they're always going to be polar. Uh, so, for example, if we look at water, water is polar. Okay, it has to do with the fact that the, the water molecule has uh, two hydrogens bonded to the oxygen, and what you end up with is this bent shape. Okay, because it has that bent structure, the oxygens are, being, are pulling the electrons, Oxygen's pulling electrons, you get partial negative, you get partial positive, partial positive. This entire molecule is polar because the, on the oxygens is where we have the, the net result of a negative charge, and on the hydrogens is where we have the net positive charge. So we would say that this molecule is polar. Okay, now you gotta be careful. You can't just say, well, okay, if there's three atoms in there, it's gonna be polar because we have to look at the carbon dioxide. And if I look at carbon dioxide, I get carbon with two oxygens on either side. Now if you do the molecular geometry here, you're going to find that that has a um, linear structure. Okay, here it's bent, here it's linear. So what happens is the uh, carbon is going to lose electrons to the oxygen, and we lose one over here, so I'm going to get a partial negative, and partial negative, and partial positive on the carbon. Well, because both ends of this are, are negative, that's not really considered polar. The definition of polar is that we have one positive side and one negative side, like over here. We have a positive region and we have a negative region. So we have a positive side, sorry, that's a negative side, and a positive side. That's the definition of polarity. Okay, so in order to figure out molecular polarity, it depends on the bond polarity and the shape of the molecule. Hence why we had to go through Lewis structures and why we had to go through molecular geometry. 